Okay, here's something fun you can do with the 12 face cards. It's always worked for me, and so hopefully it will work for you as well. So as you can see, I have all 12 of them here, and they're just kind of randomly put together, as you can see. Suits and colors mixed together. Okay, so I'm going to gather these up. Now I'm going to perform, uh, it's called an LR shuffle, just left, right. Random stacking. How would you like this stack? Left, down, right? Okay. Now I'm going to follow that up with something called the Klondike Shuffle, which is a wonderful way to mix cards. Okay. Taking the top and bottom off is one. And then another great shuffle is called the Supercut. So what you do here is you count off any number. In fact, you could, if you were here, you could tell me two, three, five, whatever number you would, you would like. Maybe one more. Okay, and then I just go into kind of a Charlie A shuffle from there. If you want three, one, two, three. Okay. If you want five, one, two, three, four, five. That's just fine. Okay, very good. And then we're going to do something interesting with a feral shuffle. So if you've seen a feral shuffle before, uh, this is where you split the cards exactly in half. But what we're going to do is we're going to flip them <laughs> the other way. And then what you do is you just perfectly, perfectly interlace them. Now there's technically two ways to interlace them. One leads to a feral in, the other one's a feral out. And I'm messing up here. There we go. That may have been a successful one. I'm not sure. But that, <laughs> that's a feral shuffle. Where half the cards are flipped face up. Uh, we can do another left, right. In fact, uh, we can do as many of these, any, any of the shuffles that I show you here and say that we can repeat them. We really can. We can do as many of those as you would like. Uh, we can do them to three piles to your heart's content. So we can do one of those or 20,000 of them with a random stacking from left to right or right to left decided by you, of course. Uh, we can deal into four piles. Uh, there's a few choices here. We can stack from left to right, right to left, or leapfrog stacking if you've seen that. Left to right, leapfrog. Okay, so this one leaps over its neighbor, lands there. This one leaps over its neighbor, lands there. How would you like these stacked? Right on left? Okay, very good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just push off, see, kind of like for the feral shuffle. Well, it happened to be that they're all face down. That's okay. So I'm going to push off half of them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a rosette shuffle. This is kind of a fun one in which really no one is controlling anything here. <laughs> Those cards are interlacing however they want to as you can clearly see, okay? And then we'll just do a couple more things. Maybe we'll do a Klondike. We've done one of those already. It's kind of a fun one to do and to watch as well. And then I'll just deal into two piles and we'll call it um, finished there. We've done enough work. Oh yeah, 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 I forgot. Off to the side here, uh, just so I have a record of it, I have a uh, written prediction so let's take a look at that. Let's see, what does the written prediction say here? Um, see, each pile of six cards, there's six in each, will consist of exactly two jacks, two queens, and two kings. Hmm, is that true? Okay, there's one queen. There's a jack, another jack, a king, a queen, another king. Check that out. How in the world were we able to do that with the choices that you made along the way as well? Check that out. That is amazing. And it always works out this way. Oh, and also I, I, I always forget there's a second part uh, to the prediction. And we'll have exactly one red and one black of each royalty. One of each color. Boy, we are amazing working together. Okay, so how is this one done? Well, just give me a moment. I'll set up the packet again. Okay, there's certainly not just one way to set up the packet, that's for sure. Uh, but what I did was I set it up as a two cycle, having cycle length six. So why don't I jog these and you can kind of see that. A two cycle is where 
you have a pattern of interest that repeats twice. Well, you can see it right here. Two black queens, red kings, black jacks, black kings, red queens, and red jacks. Okay, so this is called a two cycle. Well, two cycles are preserved or invariant under a number of mixing procedures, okay? Uh, the most common one is the Charlier shuffle, which is not one I did uh, directly there, but cutting the cards or a Charlier shuffle will not change the fact that this is cyclic. It's a two cycle with cycle length six. Now, not so well known is what I did. It's a left-right shuffle with random stacking, followed by, this is important, followed by a Klondike shuffle. So those two together constitute a shuffle that preserves two cycles, okay? So it will still be a two cycle with cycle length six. Now the other one I did is a very powerful one. It's called a super cut. So this is where you reverse count any number of cards and then you just move into a Charlier shuffle. And I can have links in the description below to supercuts and Charlier shuffles and so forth. Okay, so here what you do is you just have the spectator call out, you know, numbers between two and five maybe. Um, technically they can call out any number between zero and 12, I suppose, but so one, two, three, four, and then you just move into a Charlier shuffle one two three four five okay now the reason that that preserves cyclic packets is because when you can when you reverse count like this we're reversing the order of those cards from what they were but when you flip them you restore that order so really it's like having it's like just pulling off the top three cards except for the fact that some of them um maybe face up or they're facing the opposite way to what they were facing before, okay? So anyway, that's a, um, a super cut, okay? So those are very deceptive, very convincing that you're doing something. Okay, and then the other one is a pharaoh in which you flip one of the halves, okay? Now this ends up converting two cycles to mirrored structures, okay? So if you flip it and then just perfectly interlace them, and I don't know if maybe it takes a little bit of practice. I don't do these very often, but um, this will now be, quote, a mirrored packet relative to those pairings that we saw at the beginning. Now, since it's mirrored and we have 12 cards, the stay stack principle says that you can deal out into as many piles as you like, as long as the number of piles is a divisor of the packet size. So two divides 12, three divides 12, and then random stacking from left to right, okay? Uh, four divides 12 and so forth. Now this leapfrog stacking is just additional stacking that I've discovered on my own. So if you want to just stack from right to left, that's what it would look like, or you can do leapfrog, that would be fine. Okay, but this is mirrored, okay? Now, something I've never seen anyone do before, and I'm sure it's been done somewhere out there, but this is mirrored, okay? So what that means is uh, if I push off half the cards, because these are in a mirrored relationship with those, and if I set these down and then do a riffle shuffle, that will be equivalent to a Gilbreth shuffle for the corresponding two cycle, okay? Because with the Gilbreth shuffle, what you need is you need a cyclic packet you reverse count any number of cards and then you do like a riffle shuffle or maybe a rosette shuffle, okay? Well, if it's mirrored, so in some sense where we are here, because it was mirrored and we pushed off half of the cards, it's like reverse counting half of the cards in the corresponding two cycle. And now if we just rosette shuffle or riffle shuffle these, the Gilbreth principle is in force, okay? Well, what does the Gilbreth principle say? Well, in particular, what it says is the top half and the bottom half will have one of each of those pairings that we set up, 
So the top six cards, the bottom six cards. So in other words, the top six will have, in fact, we can even just show you that. Okay, so, so there's a black queen, uh, sorry, black king, black queen, red king, red queen, red jack, and a black jack. So that's like the top half, okay? And the bottom half will be the same. So why don't I just like randomly put these back <laughs> as far as the orientation there. Okay, so that's a consequence of the Gilbreth principle, actually. Okay, and so the final step is to realize that this is a post Gilbreth shuffled packet. So it has a top half and bottom half with the very characteristics that I just showed. Well, one thing you can do, which is really cool, is you perform a Klondike shuffle. And so what that does is it puts the top and bottom half in a alternating relationship, a cyclic relationship relative to each other. Well, if these are alternating where like one came from the top half, this came from the bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Well, if you're going to now follow that up with a left, right, you'll separate that. So that on one pile, you'll have all six of the top cards, let's say, and the other pile will consist of the six cards on the bottom, okay? So that's just a way to give the appearance of mixing the cards further when in fact you haven't actually heard anything. Okay, and then at this point you can bring out your prediction as I read off and it's going to be true. I, mean, I turned it into a, like a two part. Each pile of six cards will consist of exactly two jacks, two queens and two kings. Okay, so that will be quite surprising to people. Um, and then you reveal the second half, namely, uh, there's actually exactly one of each color, which is going to be pretty surprising that it came out so orderly. Okay. So anyway, that's how that one works. It uses quite a few principles on my channel. So take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.